have J.D. Malavia here with me. He is a Secretary General of the Solar Thermal Federation in India since 2010. It's uh, the industry association in India. And uh, they are, you are a partner in an international project which is called Solar Payback that aims at promoting the use of solar heat for industrial purposes, which is shortly internationally called SHIP. And India is one of the partner countries. So is SHIP a cost-effective solution for your industry in India? Yes, SHIP is uh, closely inching to become a commercially viable project in India, going by the past uh, developments that happened. You know, there were a couple of programs Rather, one of them is already running, one got over, the UNDP program got over, and UNIDO. That has generated a lot of momentum in the industries. So we are really hopeful that, yes, SHIP is going to become a popular and India will lead the race. So what are barriers and how does Solar Payback wants to tackle them? Major barrier we identified was lack of awareness. Uh, I think that we are going to first tackle out. And apart from that, uh, there are some minor corrections to be done as far as the technology is concerned. They need to be standardized. And once the standards developed by the government of India are in place, I'm sure that most of the barriers may get addressed. Is it awareness among the clients? And which uh, industries are most suitable for ship in India? We came across four major sectors, automobiles, food processing and dairy, including breweries, textiles, and chemical industries. These have been identified as the major, because most of them are small and medium scale industries, which require heating up to 120 degrees. So uh, I think these are the four uh, target industries that the solar payback would initially look into. So you came with an interesting topic to this conference here, it's called uh, India's Quest for Global Solar Thermal Process Leader. So what makes you confident that India will make the race? Well, the groundwork has already happened for the solar process heat in India. There have been demonstration projects set up. The results have been encouraging. I won't say that, you know, they have been 100%, but a lot has been learned out of it. And I'm sure given the kind of uh, atmosphere that's in India, the radiation parameters which are in India, being an industrialized country, I'm sure the drive is there within the manufacturers, the entrepreneurs, to come out with a solution that will become pilot to the world. Your, your association was actually lobbying for a very international, a very, a very interesting a policy instrument which is called a solar obligation, which seems to be like a quota for the industry that they have to fulfill in terms of energy use, a certain solar quota. What is the, the idea behind that? Oh, that's a very interesting thing you have asked. Uh, the Solar Thermal Federation of India, a couple of years back, undertook a study on how the heating demand could be fulfilled, you know, uh, considering that you know the fuel prices in India are, are on the rise. And we came upon an idea that, you know, if power can be obligated, why can't heat be obligated? And when the survey was done amongst the manufacturers, experts, and few industries, they welcomed it. And as an association, we put forward this suggestion to the government, which they appreciated it, and it is under consideration right now. We are hopeful that sometime it may get implemented shortly, because uh, still a lot of study needs to be done and uh, whether really industry will accept to that. So then it would be really the first country worldwide where the industry has to sort of fulfill a certain renewable share within their energy demand and it's concerning heat. You are very true. We hope so that we will um, lay the guidelines, we'll frame the guidelines for a, renew for a heating obligation. What we know is that, you know, the renewable heat obligation the government is actively planning to implement. If that happens, so yes, I think India may po probably lead the race. So how are the next steps within your solar payback project? What uh, do you need to do next? Out of all these one year of the <coughs> solar payback activities that we have done, we identified that availability of easy financing has been a, 
a barrier. I won't put a barrier, but rather, you know, that needs to be addressed to the bankers, the financial institutions. So I think to begin with, we will start doing some training programs. This couple of training programs also planned for the existing manufacturers on how they should be having an approach for market development. So I think these are the two sectors we would be focusing next. Okay, so I wish you a good luck for your solar payback project. Thank you very much.